In this fondoscopic image, there is evidence of a retinal venous occlusion. Flame-shaped hemorrhages are present along the course of a dilated and tortuous supertemporal vein. Note that hemorrhages begin approximately where the artery crosses over the vein. There are also hard exudates, that is, yellow-white deposits, due to macular edema. Cotton wool spots are also common with a retinal venous occlusion. In retinitis pigmentosa, perivascular bone spicule pigmentation results in a dark discoloration of the retina. Other characteristic findings include arterial or attenuation and a waxy optic disc. In this image, there is preservation of the macula with a surrounding area of depigmentation. This is a fundoscopic image of a normal healthy fundus. The anatomic structures of the eye grounds that we will inspect include the optic disc, the blood vessels, the macula, and the background. Here we will focus on the optic disc, which is usually pale, orange to pink in color, is round with sharp margins, and has a cup to disc ratio of less than 0.5. In this case, there is a small degree of non-pathological pigmentation at the periphery of the disc. Now we will focus on the blood vessels of the retina. The central retinal artery and vein diverge from the optic disc in four branches, superior temporal, inferior temporal, superior nasal, and inferior nasal. The arterioles are lighter colored and more narrow than the venules. Vessel indentation is not normally present where arterioles and venules cross. This is the macula, which is located temporal to the disc. The fovea is a small area located in the center of the macula, which is void of visible vessels. Finally, regard the reddish background of the fundus. There aren't any excudates, hemorrhages, lesions, scars, or other signs of pathology. Medial to the optic disc is a choroidal nevus. It is an ovoid lesion with a bluish-gray discoloration and indistinct borders. The remainder of the retina is normal. Choroidal nevi may slowly enlarge until the end of puberty, However, any changes that occur during adulthood should be regarded with suspicion. This is a classic fundoscopic image of papal edema. Early signs include venous engorgement and loss of spontaneous venous pulsations. In this case, the optic disc is elevated, the disc margins are blurred, and there are both flame-shaped hemorrhages and cotton wool spots. With long-standing hypertension, the retinal arteries narrow and the vessel walls thicken. A characteristic sign of hypertensive retinopathy is arterial venous nicking. That is, venial compression occurs at arterial venous crossings. Higher grades of hypertensive retinopathy can result in retinal edema, hard exudates, hemorrhages, and cotton wool spots. Papilla edema is a sign of severe hypertensive retinopathy. This is an image of diabetic proliferative retinopathy. Neovascularization, that is new vessel formation, is the hallmark of severe diabetic retinopathy. It commonly occurs near the optic disc and can result in traction retinal detachment and vitreous hemorrhage. Earlier signs of diabetic retinopathy, such as dotting blood hemorrhages and heart exudates, are also often present. Active retinitis due to CMV infection results in hemorrhages and areas of necrosis. The red blotches are signs of hemorrhage, while the fluffy white lesions are indicative of necrosis. This appearance has been likened to cottage cheese or scrambled eggs with ketchup. In this image, we can see what is known as a cherry red spot. It is a characteristic, but not pathognomonic finding of Tay-Sachs disease. It refers to a bright red fovea with a surrounding zone of relatively pale retina. Note that the chair red spot can also be seen in a variety of other conditions, such as Newman-Pick disease, central retinal artery occlusion, 
and carbon monoxide poisoning. This is a fundoscopic image taken from an individual with congenital rubella syndrome. The retina is speckled with punctuate hypopigmented and hyperpigmented spots. This appearance is referred to as salt and pepper retinopathy. I hope you found this lecture to be helpful and worth your time. Please feel free and very welcome to leave a comment or suggestion below. And if you like this video, please hit subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this channel.